aviation forever changed the way we travel. And a certain development by Alexander Graham Bell forever changed the way we communicate. Caravaniger takes us to a new museum that traces the evolution of the telephone. It's hard to believe that the telephone is only about 140 years old, a relatively brief life filled with constant technological and stylistic changes. As cell phones continue to replace the home telephone and landlines are becoming obsolete, a group of volunteers, all retired phone company employees, decided to dedicate their time, knowledge, and artifacts to telling the story of this radical invention and the tremendous impact it made at a time when the world still seemed very big. The Jefferson Barracks Telephone Museum, housed in a restored officer's home, took 13 years to complete. We needed to bring the building back up to code because this is an 1896 building. We started with probably about 33 volunteers, tele, telephone uh, retirees, some cases their, their spouses. We lost a lot of uh, volunteers along the way, so we really felt like we owed it to them to get this open, and we finally succeeded. The museum is laid out in chronological order, tracing the evolution of the phone from liquid batteries and magnetic cranks to novelty models. What the heck does the Star Trek one work? We have kids who come in here and look at a rotary dial phone and go, what is that? So we felt like if we didn't do a good job of preserving that history and showing them how we got from point A to point B, that it's eventually going to be lost. And once it's gone, it, it's gone. Although telephonic technology has changed since the time of Alexander Graham Bell, trading wires for air and human operators for computers, the basic premise remains the same. Send a signal, create a connection, talk. This is how you talked on the telephone before the dial telephone. You picked up the telephone and you cranked it on the side. That crank sent a signal to an operator in town. You told the operator, I'm going to speak to Hazel. She hooked you up. Some of the early phones were connected to each other by one wire, which was fine when you only had a few telephones. But when you start getting numbers, 30, 40, 50 people who have telephones, and now they all want to be connected, you obviously can't do that by a single wire from phone to phone. So that's when we went to the central offices and there was a switchboard. The first phones came out, there weren't that many people that could afford to have the phones. Um, and so, in many cases, the switchboard operator would actually have the switchboard in her house. She knew everyone by name, so when you made a call, you didn't have to give her any more information than basically, I want to talk to Mabel, and she knew who Mabel was, and she would connect you. Um, as more people got phones, you started going to like central switchboards, um, so then the personal uh, touch uh, sort of fell by the way. But originally, the, the phone operators were one of the family. Hello, everyone. I'm from your telephone company. And the message that we have for you is that we are changing your telephone service over to dial. There's been a lot of planning, preparation, and work in order to bring dial to town. You may have noticed that lots of work has been going on. New cable pulled into place and other types of construction. If the dial isn't already on your telephone, it soon will be. Many months ago, our engineers started to draw up the plans because equipment must be tailor-made to fit the needs of each community, not only for today's requirements, but for years to come. Bob Rowe was a career telephone man for 40 years, but retirement didn't mean an end to his involvement. Full of anecdotes from these years of experience, he now gives tours at the museum. The telephone that so beat up looking, it was the first dial telephone. Almond Strauger in, at Kansas City, Missouri was a funeral director. One of his competitors across town was a funeral director and that competitor's wife was the city's switchboard operator. And so when you, somebody called in, you can see it coming, somebody called in and said, I want to talk to somebody about a funeral, she gave the call to her husband. And Mr. Strauger said, I can do something about that. Mr. Strauger invented the step switch. So when you dial the telephone, the call went to where you wanted to go and you'd have to go through the operator. So I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna dial that number with this number. 
and watch the equipment. See, it's looking for number eight. It's looking for zero. It makes the phone ring. So it's almost like a puzzle. Like, yeah. And when you fit the right pieces, yes, then, that's right. then it rings on the other end. Yeah. When I hang up, all the equipment will go back to normal. He patented in 1892. The whole country picked up on this switch. And in about 1960, we began to come up with a new switch. But if you think about the fact that it amazes me is that this lasted 70 years. Pretty good story, isn't it? As the decades passed, owning a private telephone continued to be a luxury, with many families opting for a party line. Individual line service requires a separate pair of wires for each customer. In party line service, the wires are shared by two or more customers, and so service can be furnished at a lower rate. So in some areas where there were lesser phone lines available, you might have um, a four-party line, even an eight-party line which meant that there were eight people sharing that phone. So when you wanted to make a call, you picked up the receiver, and if someone was talking, um, you had to, uh, were supposed to gently hang up the receiver and wait a few minutes and then try again. But most party line complaints arise from the way customers have tried to use a shared service, unknowingly or thoughtless of the fact that it is a shared service. I can't stand it any longer. You'll have to change me to another party line. Of course, it's physically possible when there's a vacant spot in the terminal box. We'd need to send a man out, change the central office end of the line, and fix up all our records of the service. But this is what might happen. From the frying pan into the fire. As the inner workings of the telephone evolved with demands for convenience and reliability, so did its shape. What began as ornately carved pieces that were the focal point of a room soon changed to machines of functionality as the manufacturing process adapted to the demands and limitations of war. One of the uh, Western Electric phones at the time was a, a Model 302, which is sometimes called the Lucy phone, because if you watch reruns of the Lucy show, that's the phone that you'll see. Um, it had originally been made out of metal, but because of the shortage of metal during the war, um, they had to go to what they called the thermoplastic. So there were significant changes that had to be made in the manufacturing processes. And then when the war ended, there was a huge uh, uh, need for more and more phones because all of these people had come back uh, from serving in the war and were setting up uh, their own houses or going back to their own families and um, they wanted a, a phone so that they could stay in touch with everyone. You asked me what I did for a living, I never did this. That's a, that's a little car seat you sit on and the um, repairman would pull it across the, uh, the cable and he could, therefore he could repair a cable between poles. That sounds terrifying. Yes, it does, doesn't it? The museum also boasts a variety of service equipment, a collection of public phones, and a POTUS switchboard, which was only pulled out of storage for use on a presidential visit to St. Louis. The history of the telephone um, is getting lost. Uh, people today are doing away with their landlines. Um, they're looking at their telephones and go, I don't need these anymore, and they're throwing them in a trash can. Gone are the days of stretching the phone cord to near breaking point in pursuit of privacy, or hearing the familiar greeting of Hazel the operator instead of a dial tone. But the Telephone Museum acts as a monument to all those who move this world-changing invention forward. Cell phones today are wonderful. They can do so many things, and probably in the future we'll continue to do a lot more. But I think, especially for the kids, it's important to realize how we got there. <laughs>